Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Non-Farm Payrolls webinar with me, Dave Madden. Today's date is Friday the 7th of December 2018 and the time has just gone 13.15 GMT, quarter past 1 p.m. PM uh, UK time. Uh, before we actually kick off the Non-Farm Payrolls rep webinar, I just want to leave these risk warnings on the screen here in front of you. Um, it's all very straightforward. It essentially states anything that is covered in this webinar uh, is purely just my own comments and, and opinions and views uh, and it should not be taken as explicit trading or investing advice. Um, it's all very straightforward stuff so, and, and I know a lot of you have been to our webinars before so you know the drill whereby we discuss what's going on ahead of in terms of in terms of the the news of the, the news today, the big topic you'd be watching out for the state of the U.S. economy, and then what we have is at half past the live numbers will come out. We'll discuss those, and then we'll also look at market reaction in relation to what's going on. So, thank you for bearing with me on that front. Um, essentially, we ha we have a um, we have. A lot of on payrolls reports coming out now in about 13 minutes time. Uh, it's, gone, it's gone 17 minutes past one. We're expecting, according to the Reuters, we're expecting 200,000 jobs to be added um, to the payrolls um, for the month of November. Um, just taking a look here at the, at the, at the Reuters terminal. Hope you can see that okay. Um, yes, yeah, just let you know, is anybody who is having issues with the, with the sound, uh, please feel free to let me know. More than happy to um, to help out on that front, uh, but in relation to um, in relation to expectations, we are expecting uh, two hundred thousand jobs to be added for the November report. Keep in mind that would be a decline in the rate of jobs growth in comparison with the October report, which came in at two hundred fifty thousand on the average on the unemployment front. We're expecting. Uh, the unemployment rate to hold steady at 3.7% unchanged in the previous month. And on the average earnings front, uh, we're expecting average earnings on a yearly basis to increase by 3.1%. That would be the same growth rate we saw in October. And on the earnings front, on a monthly monthly basis, we're expecting, <coughs> excuse me, we're expecting average earnings to increase by 0.3%. That would be an improvement on the 0.2% that was achieved uh, in October. Now, to be perfectly honest, if the U.S. economy keeps adding there, there are about 200,000 jobs every single month. That's enough to keep the U.S. economy keep jogging along. Unemployment rate is a is at multi-decade lows in the U.S. We're talking, you know, we're talking only 3.7 percent on unemployment. We're essentially at full employment. Uh, a tick up, a movement of say one tenth of one percent in either direction. Uh, obviously, lower is better. Um, but even if it does have a slight nudge up, it isn't the end of the world. It's only if you have numbers that you know. You know, sub 100,000 jobs are added, or even uh, even jobs declined on payrolls, or else we had you know actually you know a sizable increase of say 0.3 percent, whatever 0.4 percent in the unemployment rate. Would they actually start to get worried? The U.S. jobs market is in a very very stable position. Uh, the, for me, it's all about the it's all about the earnings figures. Um, when U.S. workers earn more, they tend to spend more. Uh, so if we can see growth rates of say 3.1 percent or more on an annual basis or you know take up taking up on a month-on-month -month basis for me uh that's actually that's actually probably the most important thing within this payroll obviously a clean sweep and a really good really impressive set of numbers would have you would have the unemployment rate top in two thousand you would have either no revisions or at the very least positive revisions to the, the old number of two thousand the unemployment rate would either hold steady or even actually decrease and you'd have solid solid figures on the earnings front. Now the classic example what you see in non-farm payrolls is traders and the financial markets often spend too much time uh, being fixated on the headline number and they often can determine the, the entire report just on whether the headline figure was exceeded or whether it was not exceeded. Um, quite a few times over the years I've seen a case where um, the headline number for example was actually worse than expected. Uh, but then, which, then when traders looked at the, at the other details, they found out that the previous month's number was revised higher, and then unemployment may have dropped, and wages may have, may have been strong. Or conversely, there's been occasions where the headline figure topped expectations, the markets moved in the direction which would, which would be, which would welcome um, higher, uh, a stronger jobs market. But there was pr there was downward revisions to the old month's number. Unemployment ticked up, or the wages were weaker than expected. 
So in my view, the report needs to be taken as a whole. You can't just kind of bet, bet the um, you can't just place a trade solely around or take or or, or take a, a snapshot of the US economy solely on one number. For me, it's it's a kind of a it's it's a mixture of the whole lot. And you know, in recent months or even as in the last year, year and a half, I would say that the earnings component is is the, the most important component. A number of years ago, four or five years ago, it was it was actually you needed more jobs to be created. But now we're at such levels that it's almost it's almost um. Yeah, it's 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 become less important. It's not irrelevant, of course, it's relevant, but it's it's become less important. And even though the correlation hasn't been great between the non-farm payrolls and the ADP figures and the jobless claims, if you look at the ADP figures, which were out yesterday, um, it came in, you know it it came in below expectations, but they still added some like 179,000 uh, private sector jobs. Throughout 2018, the ADP employment has been about. An, an average or probably an average above 200,000 jobs per month. Once again, there's not a perfect correlation. In fact, the correlation isn't great in terms of month on month. But the wider view of the non farm payrolls report is showing, regularly showing, averaging of 200,000 jobs a month, and then we're seeing a similar with the ADP employment. And on the earning, on the jobless claims front in the US, um, the most important, most recent reading yesterday's reading, uh, on Jobless claims ticked up, um, ticked up, uh, came in at 231,000, which pretty, is a bit off the recent lows because the recent lows was 201,000, but then again, that figure was the lowest level in nearly 49 years. So even though the jobless rate in the United States has ticked up, as a, sm ticked up as a small bit, it's still in the grand scheme of things, um, you know, not too far away from the lowest levels in, 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 a, in, 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 in a several decades. So things are looking quite good on that front um, if you take a look at uh, uh, yesterday um, what we had out yesterday was one of the economic indicators of yesterday was the ISM uh, was the ISM figure um, it can actually be found on our market on our uh, on our calendar and if you the, market, the calendar can be found under market pulse and then go to the uh, fourth option down take a look yesterday and, and um, I, we can see the ISM manufacturing figures here and the IS, and if you look at the ISM non-manufacturing survey the um, the overall figure um, came is a 64.3 was a big improvement on the 61.7 that was recorded but within that we can see new orders and we can see the employment index and the employment and the, and the employment component tick lower so yesterday we had a slight tick lower in the employment um, component uh, the jobless claims actually slightly ticked down slightly, but they're still well off the lows of, of uh, in recent months. And the actual and the ADP figures came in a little uh, less um, than expected. So, as I was saying, sometimes there isn't a whole lot of strong correlation, which probably leads it leads you to believe you could see a, a number excess in in excess of two thousand uh, for today's non farm payrolls figure. Broadly speaking, uh, the U.S. economy has been, has been has been in decent shape. Uh, some of the economic indicators haven't been as strong uh, as others recently, but by and large, the U.S. economy is in very decent shape. What is important, though, um, is the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve are still about six. The markets are pricing at about a 60 percent chance of the of a rate hike um, later this month, but that's a big drop off, um, considering what it was at. Only, only a matter of weeks ago, uh, only a matter of months ago, there was a, a very there was a, there was talk of a definite rate hike in December and possibly two, if not three, rate hikes in 2019. That was the the uh, the general view of the market. Um, let's say going back in early October, when Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, stated um, that the interest rate in the United States was nowhere near was still very far off or a very long way off from the neutral rate. Since then, um, Mr. Powell has actually rolled back on that, and he, he recently stated that a couple of policymakers at the Fed feel that interest rates in the U.S. are pretty much very, pretty close to the neutral rate. Um, also, what we've seen here, what, 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 how, the, how this has impacted the financial markets, is, um, is U.S. government bond yields. This here is the yield on the 10-year U.S. government bond. As we can see, it's been pointing lower. This was in early November, right up until early December, so the last month. We can see that the yield on the U.S. 10-year yield has declined uh, from in from in around the kind of 3.2, 3 spot, 3 spot 2.3 down to 2.89, and even the recent low was uh, 2.89 spot 
two spot eight nine one seven. So what that tells us is that the decline in the yield on, on the ten year government bond suggests that traders are less fearful or, or, or suggests that traders are pricing in fewer rate hikes in the near term. So when it was when the yield was up over three point two percent that was that was during the kind of era of about a month ago when traders were thinking we could have a rate hike in deck and we could have two if not three rate hikes in 2019. Now we're in a scenario whereby deck is only about a 60% probability and going into 2019 um, we, 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 you could see you know a far far fewer number of, of rate hikes in that. So when bond yields are, are are pushing lower, that's when traders get worried, thinking hold on maybe the US economy isn't a, isn't in as good a shape as initially thought because there are fewer rate hikes on the agenda. If you take a look down here and we see the yield on the two-year note, um, the, the, kind of the yield on the two-year note is 2.7, say in, in the region of um, 2.77, 2.68 uh, in, in this region here. If you scroll down to the five-year yield, uh, the yield on the five-year is 2.75 uh, versus 2.75. So the yield on the five-year note is below that of the two-year of the two-year. That is actually itself in a bit of a worry because when the longer when the yield on the longer data bonds starts is below that of the shorter data bonds, that is that's that's a that's um often the, the bond market is telling us that they expect um the number of rate hikes in the kind of medium term to be kind of far fewer than in, in the current position. And when you have a scenario whereby the yield on say the 10 year yield, which is currently 2.89, if that were to drop below the um the, the two year which is currently in the region of around 2.77 should we have a, a should the 10 year drop below the two year that would be a quite scary just because um when that has happened in recent in, in recent decades that has always kind of been a, a forewarning to a recession in the u.s economy so i think it's a bit overdone because i think the u.s uh, u.s u.s economy is in decent shape but it's almost like it's almost the way traders are talking about it now it's almost like a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy whereby if bond yield, if the two-year bond yield drops below that of the two-year, the ten-year bond yield drops below that of the two-year bond yield, that will get traders talking about a recession. And lo and behold, if traders have to act, after, lo and behold, if traders have to act after the recession, they could then actually alter their spending, which may may actually bring about uh, a decline in economic activity, which which could, which could in theory lead to. Uh, negative growth and in, in turn a recession. So we are at 129. The numbers will be coming out now in a few minutes time. Let's take a look. As I was saying, we take a look here on the chart of economic indicators. We get the exact countdown here on on the Reuters terminal, which I have here. So it's less than uh, nine seconds. So this is the main thing we need to keep an eye for. It'll populate in this box here. That is a big miss. Um, the non-farm payrolls figure came in at 155,000. Uh, so well below um, the consensus estimate of 200,000. Also adding to that, uh, that is in relation to Canada. So the, so the headline figure came in at 155. Notice how there's a negative revision. Um, the, the old number of 250,000 for October was revised lower to 237. So that's a, a double negative. Unemployment held steady at 3.7% in line with expectations. The average earnings on a year on year basis held steady at 3.1% in line with expectations. That's good. What's a bit worrying here is the average earnings on a monthly basis held steady at 0.2%, but that came in below expectations of 0.3%, and on top of that, we can see that the, the previous month's number was, was revised from 0.2% to 0.1%. So my guess is, my overall take, this is an okay, um, an okay jobs report. Um, the headline figure was poor, there's a, there, there's a negative revision to the previous number, uh, and on top of that, um, the the uh, one of the earnings component was was uh, wasn't wasn't too wasn't too hot. Uh, we can see the average earnings on a monthly basis held steady, but the previous month's number was revised lower, so a bit weaker on the earnings. Now, what I've just done there is uh, 
added 155 and 237 together and divided by 2. That comes in at if you have to average the two months report together, um, you get a reading of 200 and 196,000 jobs. So this report on its own is a weak number, but the previous number, despite the negative revision, is still a positive. So I, I think what's been a common theme in the last few months is actually lumping two reports together, the current one and the and the uh, and their old and the and the revision to the old one. Uh, so I think actually it's still looking okay at the U.S. jobs market. Unemployment is is at a uh, is at three point seven percent, and on top of that, the actual headline, the on average, the average is U.S. is is is, er, is you know adding about on average two two thousand jobs per month. So things are looking still looking fairly good. That being said, um, uh, I think I've, I suspect things are going to be a bit negative in terms of the move in the U.S. dollar, and we could see a bit of a lift to the um to the uh, to the upside in terms of equity markets. While we're here, we also have a quick talk about the Canadian numbers. Don't forget the uh, the dollar CAD will be in, in play. Canadian unemployment uh, dropped to 5.6%, better than expected. And also what, what's impressive about these numbers is that um, in terms of full-time employment, full-time employment increased. Uh, and also the employment change was 94,000, which is completely smashed the 11,000 that markets were expected that markets were expecting and what's good about this is that of the 94,000 we saw that nearly 90,000 came from full-time employment and only a, only a small amount only 4,000 came from part-time employment so actually very very impressive numbers out of Canada the headline rate fell we had a very strong employment change and the vast majority of the employment change came from full-time work so that's a very strong number out of Canada so that would we'll start off the uh, with we'll taking a look at what's going on with the dollar CAD I suspect we're, we're going to be uh, much lower on the dollar card um, on, the, on the back of those numbers we've seen out of both countries. So take a look now. What I'm going to do now is uh, now that we've anybody wants to kind of share any comments or their thoughts or opinions on the numbers, feel free to do so. And over the next you know 12 to kind of 15 minutes, I'm going to run through some popular markets which I think are worth having a look at. But if there are any markets you guys want to have a look at, feel free to. Um, Feel free to to type in the chat box and I'll take a look at those markets. I'll be covering the usual stuff, the big indices, the big currencies, uh, and the commodities. What will I what will I say to you folks? Uh, we we had a week weakish or middle of the road um, set of figures from the US and a very strong set of numbers from the uh, from the from the uh, from Canada. And what you know, and a, and a fairly sizable sell off in the uh, in the dollar card. <coughs> Excuse me. That being said, uh, we have even though we have, we've had a, had a pullback. I think that needs to be taken. Um, that needs to be taken um, in, in in the context of the wider view. Bearing in mind, yesterday the dollar CAD hit a level not seen since June 2017. So we're talking about a bit. We're essentially at yet as of yesterday an 18 month high on dollar CAD. So a bit of so the market is doing well. Classic example of higher highs and higher lows along here. Uh, so this could be an opportunity for some potential buying. Should we see further ground loss on the dollar card, we actually could see some uh, potential buying into this market. Just because the market's in a classic example of an, of an upward trend. Uh, it's been that way since, uh, since, early, since early October. Uh, buying on the dip has been a popular strategy recently. So it might be an opportunity for some traders actually to look. Um, it, might, it, might be, it might be an opportunity to look. Uh, look, look into, uh, we could see some buyers and um Buy into dollar card, given that buying the dip has been a popular strategy recently. If we do see further pressure uh, on these numbers, we could see the the, the dollar card head back down towards the 132.50 area. Notice how there was a bit of there has been a fair bit of consolidation, both um, resistance and support from the area recently, and a move below that might bring the recent early December lows of the 131.60 region into play. Should you move to the upside, and if you take out the, uh, the recent high, we could be heading up towards the 135 region on dollar card. Um, are there any other markets? Um, I was asked a question about what platform do you use to show those graphs and figures. One of the so this platform I'm showing you is actually our actual economic calendar, which can be found on our website under Market Pulse. Go to the uh, the fourth option down. The other um, chart that I was showing you, or the other block of economic data that I was showing you, was actually the Reuters terminal uh, that I actually have 
um, uh, as, as a part of my, my job as a market analyst. Um, Bonus terminals are fairly expensive, uh, so it, but it's, it's a, if you're going to be a market analyst and working for a, a broking company, a trading company, it's sort of a, a necessary expense. You can you can look into a royal terminal yourself, but uh, you, you'll find that they're fairly expensive. Um, are there any other markets you'd like me to, uh, to have a look at? What I'm going to do now is uh, take a look at the S&P 500. So what I will be doing is, if, even if you make suggestions or not, I'll be uh, taking a look at a couple of the... Um, a couple of the, uh, the the major indices, currencies, and commodities at the back of this. And like I said to you, I thought it was a slightly weakish number. And what have you seen here? We've seen a spike higher on the S&P 500. So the market is pushing higher. The long and the short of it is this: these numbers, in my opinion, I think will will, will temper the Federal Reserve in terms of their language and their willingness to hike rates over the next say six or six to twelve months. And uh, we're, we're seeing that play out so far in the S&P 500 futures. If you take a look at the daily chart of the S&P 500, and if you draw a line between the lows of February 2016 and November 2016, we get this trend line here. And as you can see, um, it's been it was well respected back in in late late October again um in late november and granted it traded below it yesterday but notice how it closed well well above it um so you could you could you could you know you could still include that you could still, you could still leave the, the trend line untouched untouched rather so essentially while we hold north of this trend line despite all the kind of chaos that's going on global, global financial markets while we, we hope we hold north of this trend line on the S&P 500, it's likely we could see further gains being made from here. Uh, and should we, should we look to push on higher from here, we could be looking heading up towards the recent high, uh, which comes into play in around 2,813. Notice how the high here was just shy of the high in uh, early November, which was in around 2,817. So... Uh, if we do see the market drift at low, we might see some uh, fresh buyers enter the fold just because there's been a number of occasions where this trend line has acted decent support. Now, if you are going to be trading um, the S&P 500, it's also worth just at least keep an eye on what's going on with the Dow Jones. And uh, Dow Theory, uh, one of the tenets of, of Dow Theory is that the indices or the averages must confirm each other. So as I talked about how the S&P 500 is above, currently above its trend line, we can see here that the um, that the Dow Jones, granted, it has traded below its trend line a number of occasions, but we are up, it's, it is back above this trend line here. And if you draw a low between the lows of February, March, April, and May, you get this trend line here, the Dow Jones. And what, what if you're going to trade the S&P 500, and if, while the Dow Jones is above this trend line, it makes it more likely that both markets are going to move higher. If both markets fall below their respective trend lines, it, it makes it more likely that the both markets will move lower. If one is above this trend line and the other is below this trend line, that's where you have a bit of indecision and the outcome or the potential outcome becomes less clear. Um, like I said, feel free. I'll be chatting here for another five or six minutes. I'll take a look at a couple of currency pairs. Are there any? Is there any markets you want to have a look at? Just just feel free to uh, stick it in the chat box. Don't be shy. I'll happily. Uh, I try to properly uh, analyze whatever uh, markets you, you, you put forward. I'll just take a look at a very small chart, a very short data time. As you can see here, the euro rallied on the back of this, largely because of the uh, kind of middle of the road numbers that came out of the US. Um, this, is, is, this is an interesting one because even though the United States appears to be less um, hawkish than it once was and it's taking a slightly more dovish stance, the euro is still under major pressure, and and is, but is, but if we could kind of hold off, hold above the lows here um, at 112.16, we could look to kind of push on higher. And this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play in on the kind of 114, one spot 14. Yes, I will do dollar index next. next. Um, this this uh, 50 moving average, which comes to play at one spot 14.11, this could act as resistance because it's been a number of occasions. We can see here that it acted as decent enough resistance back in early October, and if metric has acted as resistance in the past, it makes it more likely it will just do so in the future. And even if it goes beyond that, if, even if it runs into the, uh, you could see it run into resistance in you know, this area here, this this yellow line, uh, which comes to play just north of 115.10, and 115.10 is also a fairly important re uh, region for um, euro dollar because 
uh, over the uh, over the summer months. It did act, act as both really support and resistance in recent months. So 115 is also an area to keep an eye out for. And if you do have a push on higher from 115, we could be looking heading up heading up head up towards one spot 1750. This this area here, this uh, red line here, the 200 day moving average. But if the market does turn over on itself and we take off the recent lows here in, of November, we then be looking at levels heading head back down towards levels not seen since June 2017. So 18-month lows. So if we break below one spot 12, 16, that will be a very bearish sign for um for the for the uh, euro versus the US dollar. I take a look now at the dollar index. Yes, I will come on to WTI and Brent, uh, given how choppy uh, and crazy um, the oil markets have been uh, in, in recent uh, in recent sessions dollar index like i was saying we, we've seen the, the, the uh we've seen the the euro and the and the, and the canadian rise versus the uh, the greenback on the, on the back of this there's your answer right there folks numbers come out of half one fairly decent sell-off in the in the dollar ver in the dollar index granted some of it has been actually brought back into play but uh Ultimately, that the wider view is is still upper trend is still in, in play for the uh, for the dollar index. But what I will say is this is that we could be at a we could be at a point where the dollar index might be looking to run out of steam. And I say that because the high here in November failed to take out the failed to take out the high um, in early November, and then the highs here uh, in late November failed to take out the mid November highs. The highs in December failed to take out to take out the November high so even though we haven't actually began to get a print new kind of multi-week lows yet um, we haven't taken out new highs and in order for the trend to be still in an upward trend it needs to be creating higher highs and higher lows like what we were seeing like what we're seeing here market goes up pulls back market goes up pulls back up pulls back we have us getting hitting, hitting higher highs and given the given the talk of recession given the um, What's going on in U.S. government bond yields? Given today's numbers in terms of non-farm payrolls, I would I would say that that kind of adds up. We're not seeing higher highs for a reason on the, on the dollar index. Now, I would then keep an eye out for the December fourth low at 96 spot 30 because a break below that that's that's the most recent kind of obvious big low. A break below that could suggest uh, we, we, we then be hitting kind of you know multi-week lows and a break below that could bring the kind of mid-November low at 95 spot 92 into play and that in itself uh would also would also be fairly bearish if you take out that level okay i have a time to look at a couple more markets so i'll look at wti and also look at brent crude oil so obviously the major commodities are listed in us dollar so a weakened a weakened um a, a weakened um us dollar it makes it commodities a bit more uh, a bit more affordable but then again what's going on in the oil market is uh, is um, in relation to OPEC and cuts is also a, a very important issue as well so as you can see here the oil market was creeping a bit higher before um, before the numbers were announced they were announced here and and, and the soft US dollar has managed to uh, has managed to give uh, Brent a little bit of assistance now uh, I'm a big I'm a big fan of looking at what the trend is doing and the market is in a class example of a downward trend lower lows and lower highs all the way along but that being said we have seen a bit of a, a bottom forming in around here and if we can hold off of the recent lows and it depends how this candle um, plays out we've got a fairly decent bullish candle here now the body of this candle could be construed as a bullish en engulfing here so we could look for the the body of this candle could could basically fully engulf uh, yesterday's candle. So this is the potential to be a bullish engulfing. And notice how the lows here are well above the, the recent lows. And if you can hold above the recent lows, this area here, the 29th of November, which come into play at a 57 spot 50, in around there. If you can hold above the recent lows, we could see the uh, the, the oil market pushed on higher. Bear bear in mind though, keep an eye on what's going on with, with OPEC. Um, obviously, I've been doing a live webinar for the last half an hour, or so if any new announcements haven't, I haven't been able to, um, I haven't been able to spot. The last I heard was that there is a, a cut in the pipeline, compared to the pond, but 
it's kind of looking like the cut may not be as big, big as a mark as trainers were originally expecting. Going into the meeting a few days ago, people were talking about a cut of 1.4 million barrels of oil per day. I've been here, I've been speaking and seeing on Twitter and hearing of various different sources. Um, we could be looking at a cut of say there there about a million dollars of barrel a million barrels of oil per day. Um, and should that be the case, that may not be enough because trainers that may not be enough to actually stem this wider downward trend and also this upward move here that we're seeing could be just a bit of a short covering and a bit of barrel hunting in advance of the actual final announcement being made um from what i gather countries like iran want to be um meant, want to be left exempt from any kind of across the board coordinated cut um, Saudi Arabia aren't that bothered, aren't looking to cut as deep as some traders originally assumed they were because the Saudis want to keep it, the Americans on side. So as always with OPEC and uh, and its partner Russia, they're not, they, you know, they, they come together as a group, but they usually have their own agendas and they often and they often just really kind of push forward their own agendas. So there isn't this, there isn't always everyone is singing from the uh, this, the same hymn sheet. Bearing in mind, like I said, if we stay if we stay, if we stay, if we stay above these lows, I think we could squeeze up back up towards this area here, in around six to seven dollars a barrel, maybe even up towards kind of sixty nine. But the, but you can't really ignore the uh, the very strong downward trend that we've been in. And of course, if you take out the recent lows here, that would would, would point to uh, to further losses. That's uh, break crude oil, and I'll take a look at WTI, and then we'll look to uh, to wrap things up. Once again, the five-minute chart shows that we had a very decent we had a move to the upside on the back of that, on the back of the actual amount, the the, uh, the figures being released. Very similar looking chart here on WTI. Classic example of a downward trend, lower lows and lower highs all the way downtown. Um, similar situation here, whereby. If we hold above the recent lows, uh, WTI, which come into play at 49 spot 29, if we hold above this area here, we could see a bit of a squeeze high. We could head back up towards 55. I know there's a bit of consolidation in around here, um, in around the 57 spot 24, 57 spot kind of 90, that, that kind of area. We could, we could see a bit of a squeeze higher here. Basically, we need to kind of really take at least take out this area here before we become more confident the downward trend is going to come to an end and if you go beyond that 60 bucks would then be the next day to keep an eye out for but if you take out these lows here that'll be another that'll be another kind of low added to the uh that'll be another multi-month low you know it's it's october 17 is the last time we saw these levels so we are talking you know you know 14 month low if you take out our recent low here we could be looking at back down towards 48 dollars per barrel um, I do want to, I'm going to wrap things up there because it's now uh, coming up to 10 to 2 and I've been talking for uh, for just over half an hour. I do want to uh, thank you for, for, for logging in. Um, on our trading platform under uh, Insights, we're going to show you here. If you want to replay this video, there's going to be a link to this uh, webinar under Insights. Insights can be found under Market Pulse and it is the second option down. Also, please feel free to contribute to our chart form section here. Uh, chart, chart forward can be found on the market market pulse it is the um the third option down and essentially all you do is any, any, anybody with, with an account of cmc can, can contribute myself and other analysts often contribute whereby you take a screenshot of a particular market and then just kind of write some commentary on, on, uh, on what you think the market's doing in terms of price action uh, i do want to uh, thank you for tuning in this week and if you have any any comments you want to make in relation to the, any of the videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.